We're live. Don't you do it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the 131st episode of the Alter Ego Podcast. I'm your host, Jack Austin. With me, as always, Mr. Ryan. What's happening? How you doing, buddy? I'm swell. How are you? Doing all right. Doing all right. Uh, Rhino, back with us again from the Good Great evening. White Horn. Good evening. And uh, Mr. I don't know how close to be to my camera, Nello. What am I supposed to do? Should I go backwards? I can go backwards. No problem. Look, I'm all See how back. the arm extends with you? <laughs> What's up, everyone? Oh, my goodness. What a week. What a week. Got uh, some pretty good stuff to talk about today. Uh, if everybody was paying attention, you got a little Ant-Man action last night. Whew. That's actually what I wanted to start the episode off by talking about. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Mm. What's the official name of that show? Can we or that movie? Can we can we ask? I mean, is it Ant-Man? Because all I keep seeing is Quantumania. Then I see Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. It's Ant-Man and the Wasp, semicolon, Quantumania. Right. Seems legit. I mean, hey, they should just add Boogie Bonanza Jamboree after that. Ant-Man and the Wasp, colon, Quantumania, Boogie Bonanza Jamboree. I would go see that. Me too. Is it a semicolon or is it a colon? (laughs) I guess grammatically. What's the one with the two dots? Two dots dots is the colon. Semicolon is the dot in the the Uh, comma. Dot in the comma is the semicolon. That's the semicolon, yeah. Surprise! We uh, didn't all know that in the uh, group here, but that's okay. We're gonna move on. I don't even know. Uh, what did we all see the trailer? Of course, mm, I yeah. saw. I think a part of it. Again, I didn't catch it during a football game, but I wasn't really paying attention. You know I saw I mean? the I trailer, like and I'm like, eh. really? Eh. Okay. Ryan Ryan actually fell asleep during the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Like I don't know. He fell asleep during that game. Good lord, we're not getting into it. But um, uh, I loved the trailer. I thought it looked good. It added a lot of stuff to my Marvel palette. It added a lot of characters. We finally got to see a little bit of action. And this looks like it will definitely, and that's kind of been reported that this will have a much more serious tone than any other Ant-Man movie has come out yet. Oh, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. It also has the longest runtime of any of the Ant-Man so far. Two hours and only five true. minutes. I mean, this is going to be a wild movie. This is, you know, and and somebody was asking me before, like, why is this one a big deal? I'm like, well, because this is, you know, remember in Guardians when you first saw Thanos and you were like, oh, shit, this is the guy. Well, we've seen, you know, we've heard of him. You've seen a brief glimpse of a statue of him if you saw Loki. So, you know, this is the guy. When you were introduced to Thanos last time, Ant-Man uh, Quantumania is going to kick that up a notch. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot of Kang the Conqueror and a lot of what he's capable of. Well, we've seen Kang already in Loki, though, right? He, that's that when he variance. made his debut. That was a no. variant of Kang. Right. That's what I was going to say is that's all like variations. And in this trailer, they even say he can destroy timelines. So all the variants of, excuse me, of Kang are incredibly powerful. So this is going to be very interesting to see which way it goes. We saw a lot of crazy stuff in this trailer and it looks very heavy. Like you're is, going to see a lot of things happen here. This is the Kang that the variant Kang talked about in Loki, like the one that you don't want to see, the one that you don't want to experience. Right. He's the one who's like, wait till you meet some of my variants. Right. I get it. When he was at the desk and he's like, I am nothing compared to what's coming. Yeah. Yeah. If you kill me, obviously. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, man. I saw, I even and saw think- Modoc, and I'm like, not really all that impressed with what that looks like either. I don't know. I what like- do you want? You want a guy's face? I don't know. I, I, uh- I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to make any assumptions on this yet. All I know is we've talked about this several times where it's like, ah, they're dropping us stuff. We don't know what we're looking for yet. And in this trailer, Kang says to him, I have what you want. And what do I want? You want time. And you're looking back at those seven years or however long, five years that he was snapped and Kang is promising that. And you takes me, it took me right back to that moment where Scott Lang finds out Cassie is uh, not dead and that he is. And he goes running to the house to talk to her. And then he just can't process her standing in front of him. And I'm like, 
this is laying up to Kang's motivations to getting a hold of Ant Man. And oh. I was like, damn. I can't believe because they are they're setting up the breadcrumbs. We just haven't seen some of them yet. Is this the most key Marvel movie in this like four phase four phase five buildup to where like so this far. is what's going to kick everything off right? And if they miss here, what happens? They won't they won't miss here for one. But uh, to, to echo what Rhino just said, so far this will be the most important movie that you have seen in the MCU chronological storytelling. It's bigger than Far From Home or No Way Home. It's bigger than Multiverse of Madness. Multiverse of Madness and No Way Home are now officially stepping stones toward what we're going to see here. Actually, if you want to talk about what's pushed the narrative more than anything, coming up to Ant-Man Quantumania, it's Loki Season 1. This may be the biggest uh, movie since Phase 2, even. I mean, Phase 3, we already knew what the Mm -hmm. the upcoming features were going to be. We knew what the storyline was going to culminate into. Phase four was just stepping stones, like Jack said. So this might be the biggest movie Marvel has had in terms of the storyline since phase two. It's going to set up everything as far as Kang is is concerned. It's not going to set up the new Avengers movies entirely. It's just going to set up who Kang is and what he's going to be capable of moving forward. Um, And just one more thing that I want to say. You guys ever remember the movie Snatch? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great freaking movie. movie. Great great movie. So thanks. You like Dex? When they were writing that movie and they were testing it with audiences, there were too many people who identified and liked Bricktop, who is the mobster, the villain of the movie. Too many people liked him. And what they did to make people hate him was they had they showed him doing the dog fighting and baiting the dog. And then people started to hate him in that movie. That's why there's a big character arc for him. Now, Throwing Ant-Man against Kang is baiting the dog, and that's us. We love Ant-Man. Ant-Man's funny. He's lovable. He's always the guy who's in the middle of the situation, making it lighter and helping everyone. They're going to put that guy that we love against a freaking Rottweiler. Now, I don't mean to put Rottweilers in a bad light, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah, the they are putting is coming the guy the you box. love against the, the machete. Right. And so this is going to set Kang up beautifully, whether Ant-Man lives or dies. So this movie, what you're telling me, somebody who is not as like knowledgeable on all this stuff Mm -hmm. is the setup for phase four and five. Right. It's basically it's like you're not you're done dropping crumbs. You're now going to give us like an appetizer. I think if I was over with. I would say this, if this I'm is sorry, anything, phase it's, five, the, it's either the beginning yeah. of phase five or the cap on phase four. So this is like, this is like when you go like out to eat, it's like the little appetizer, like to get you going. No, Ant-Man is not to get you going. Ant-Man no, is to Ant-Man sit is down the table. He's yeah. of course. This, so you're so, opening the door. You're I busting mean, the door wide open. This is not going to have like, any impact on phase four because phase four is done. We Phase four is, is already complete. It's finished. Nothing else with phase four is going to matter anymore. This is what's going to kick off phase five. Okay. So it's the opening act, but it's like going to a concert that has a big name opening act. What if this is just to set up Blade? <laughs> and he goes to him and asks for time to go forward. The I mean, be made. it's it's not out of the realm of possibilities. I mean, all of these things are going to start to click. If you don't remember when they had Loki season one again. There was times where Mobius and one of the other agents was like, man, we've brought in demigods. We've brought in vampires. And that was the nod to Blade. And they're they're talking about the TVA dealing with literally everything. So I think a lot of this is going to lay out that groundwork. Is there something you saw in the trailer? Like both of you guys who like literally probably have watched the trailer multiple times. Is there something you saw in the trailer that maybe a guy like me didn't see? Or is there something you're excited that you're like, man, I saw this little snippet. And I'm like, man, I can't wait to see this. I hope they build on this. Yeah, I think uh, the technology that you see in like the little city, little capital area that Kang resides in. I think that technology is what made the Ten Rings from Shang-Chi very similar looking. And I think Shang-Chi's rings will tie into, maybe not in this movie, but they will tie into Kang somehow going forward in Phase 5. It's very possible, too, because think about that. Shang-Chi's father was hundreds of years old, and the quantum realm deals with time. 
Hmm. And so that could have been something that dripped into Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings. I totally agree. Uh, the thing that I'm excited to see is the brutality that they showed of Kang. They show a bit of that fight, and I'm sure it's a lot worse. I want to see them flesh out this villain so everybody's like, ooh, this is a bad time. Because they don't show him just saying, you know, they show him looking at me and go, your daughter might not want to watch what's about to happen. You know he's he is going to get down and dirty, and I'm ready to see that next level from the MCU. Do you think it'll be like a Negan like death scene if the Ant Man does perish? I don't think you'll see something of that level of brutality in the MCU in terms of Negan because if you look at the audience that Disney and the MCU okay. is trying to All garner. Right. So All no. Right. Um I but do for PG think, thirteen it'll be brutal. I think you see brutal. Let's think about Thanos. Did Thanos ever really bloody anybody up? Nah, no, uh, it worked the Hulk over pretty good, which is complete horseshit. But you know, he, he he worked the gauntlet. He also, I mean, he punched a few people, but it was never really brutally violent. Like I guess him and Cap kind of went at it, but it wasn't anything. They didn't wear. go at it. He pushed the hand forward. Cap grabbed the hand, and that was it. And then he got a right cross to the face. Okay, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking Kang is going to get a little bit more personal. So you just talked about Thanos. Do you think Thanos? I mean, not Thanos, but you think we're gonna care? Or kind of have like more interest in Kang like we did Thanos? I don't know. I I, I, I don't think so. I, I I think Kang is gonna captivate the audience in a different way than Thanos did. Thanos had a mission, and his mission was snapping out half of existence to make a better universe. And if you think about it philosophically, this is actual uh, it's actually a debate that's happened at the college level. Was Thanos right? And there are a lot of people that agree yeah. with what Thanos did. I mean, so it's a his lot more vision than the college level, his, but yeah. His vision, his message that he was trying to portray to the audience is a lot different than what Kang is. I mean, you've got to think about it. Kang, the Conqueror. All he wants to do is dominate and kill. That's it. And be, and be the head of that food chain and 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 dominate the order. I think he's just another... Ver Obviously, I know he's another variant of he who remains. He's keeping the timeline in order, but he's in charge of that timeline so it's a great thing don't try to recreate thanos don't try to redo thanos or anything like that let him be his own thing and then focus on kang for what kang is because if you try to recreate the wheel people are going to see it coming they're going to be disinterested they're going to call marvel lazy and not to mention it would be lazy there are so many other stories to involve and now you've got variants and things like that and different universes that are coming about yeah kang is going to be the top of the food chain i guess that's my, my what i want from ant-man i want something fresh i want something new i don't want this rehash stuff of the same characters over and over and over again sure and i maybe i just want a breath of fresh air maybe i just want something new something different well, a la loki style you know what i'm trying you, to say if you look at every single ant-man movie that has come out they have been exactly that they have been different than anything that we've seen in the MCU. And that's every iteration of Ant-Man. In the first one, he's just getting the suit, just doing the job, just trying to save some friends, naming the ants, being funny. He's not Captain America. I can do this all day. Mm -hmm. He's not the billionaire that's out there fighting until his armor falls off. That's true. He's not Thor holding the hammer of the gods and being able to hold all that power. He's a dude who could shrink and get bigger. And the See second one. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, and then touching on that, that's one of the reasons why, for me, this movie, I'm not so sure. Uh, I understand, like, Ant-Man going against freaking uh, Kang. Like, come on, bro. Like, that's not even a competition. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Well, the, so pre the premise is... What happens here. The premise is that they're studying the quantum realm as they have been since Ant-Man and the Wasp. Let me get back to that. Let me finish my second okay. part. Was, yeah. you know, Ant-Man 2, he's still he's in house arrest. All he's trying to do is help Hope and Hank. He doesn't really even have a titular villain. Ghost is in it. But at the end, everybody ends up trying to help him. So that movie, again, totally different theme, totally different everything. In the Avengers, it's, hey, guys, I just got out of the quantum realm and I can help you. Is that anyone's sandwich? And now you've got him <laughs> studying the quantum realm. And then he's going down there with the devil. And the devil's going to say, hey, listen, I know you can do this. And you're my way out. And so I don't think it's so much of a fight. I think it's a try to survive or, you know, and even says it in the trailer. I don't need to win. We both just need to lose. Well, there's also a reason why you're putting Ant-Man up against Kang first. You're not going to put a Thor up against Kang. You're not going to put the Avengers up against Kang. You need somebody to set that storyline up because we all know Kang doesn't die. 
So you basically know that Ant-Man is not link, right. We yeah. all know Ant-Man is not capable of defeating Kang on his own at all. So you you bring in a lovable character, and like Jack set this up earlier with the 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 baiting the dog. You bring in a lovable character who is not capable of beating Kang by any means, and that's what sets up the storyline going forward. Not only do you hate Kang, but you obviously know he doesn't die. He's going to be back later. And then so you that's, rally I think all that's the exactly other guys why too. Ant-Man is is the first movie. This is Ant-Man's the first guy. Yeah, I mean, but like, like, just for those of you who don't know and just follow this for information, you give Ant Man and the Wasp several months to prepare. You give them time. You give them planning, and they know they're going up against Kang. Kang is still going to win on a moment's notice. It's not a fight, so it's kind of odd to look at that and go, "Oh, why, why would you put those two against each other?" That's why we're all intrigued as well. Kang is top tier. So in essence, Kang needs Ant Man to get out. Mm -hmm. of the quantum realm or whatever he's in to get into modern the day real world yeah, okay okay that's that's the idea yeah i think that's i think that's what the premise is going to be he he needs help to get out of the quantum realm and then he ends up screwing ant-man over in the long run so, so this is a make on. or break movie for marvel first for stage five uh sure yeah it is but i've got to say let's look at all their let's look at their history every movie that they've needed to hit and be a it's, home run has been a hit and a home run no, like, so, look, go ahead. I was gonna say, I thought Kang was like all oh, powerful. Why does he need Ant Man's help to get out of the quantum realm? Because somebody else put him there, and there's probably some stipulations as to who put him there that he can't reach, which is why he's trapped. Well, isn't that Man the whole Man premise? Dying, Man Man, he figured out the quantum realm and how to time travel and right. go in between timelines yeah. so that they could get the stones and return the stones, even in Infinity War and Endgame, right? Correct. I mean, I think so, Janet I mean, Van Dyne's the one that trapped him there. I think that's why you see her in the trailer say, "Turn that shit off immediately." Was that Julia? So she doesn't know that's Michelle Pfeiffer. Oh. So yeah. she is saying, Cassie's trying to impress everybody and say, "Hey, I created like a walkie-talkie. We could communicate with this." And before that, they were just traveling there, grabbing energy, jumping out, or doing the whole time travel thing. Yeah. Now Cassie's saying, "Well, I." gone even better now we can communicate and she's like oh don't do that you just put a hook in the water and then you know obviously they get a bigger bite than they can handle because kang didn't come to them he said all right well you're coming to me and since you figured out how to do this you're going to figure out how to get me out and i'm sure he's going to say something along the lines of or i kill your entire family i mean sound about right how does he do yeah. that he's stuck in the realm well, See, I'm, I guess I'm, on February 17th, we'll question. figure that out. So here's what we're going to figure that out We're here. You know what I mean? Ant-Man is clearly figured out. Geared hardware, these rugged yet stylish <laughs> watches are the perfect accessory for the man who's always on the go. Whether it's a board meeting or a bar fight made with high quality materials and backed up by a lifetime warranty, you can rest assured your geared watch will be there for you when you need it most. Go to www.geareredhardware.com. Use promo code alter ego 20 to get 20% off your order and then Ant-Man gets out. That's an amazing transition. I just want you to know. That's amazing. Ant-Man Ant -Man is actually wearing a geared watch in the movie <laughs> that's what keeps he's, him he's like not up, he's not yeah. but that'd be yeah. awesome that'd be awesome um no this movie is going to be huge i i think i'm i'm really expecting a lot of big things out of it um i still haven't had a chance to see avatar yet though me neither is me off. i want to go see it but I, I don't think I can hold my bathroom break for three and a half hours. I know I can't. I know I'm going to have to look at somebody and go, all right, let's alternate. I'll tell you what happens when I leave. You tell me what happens. You know what I mean? Like vice versa. The people are still blue and the shit's still long. <laughs> <laughs> well, yep. Uh, expert seems, synopsis by, like by uh, what, yeah. I, what I miss it's a avatar. simplification. Yeah. Yeah. It, okay. Spoiler alert. Yeah, it CJ, won't be Ryan. That's CJ, the guy. Yeah. What CJ. happened? Fucking blue monkeys are still riding the fish mountain. I don't know what you want. Well, the blue guys got tails and shit now. They, they're, they're in the water. That's what happened. Actually, here's what's going to happen. Hey, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm watching it out. Wake home. up, bro. I ever watch Yo, Ryan, it's still I'm the previews. <laughs> I want to watch it at home go? with my big new yeah. TV and yeah. I, where I can like stop it, take breaks, get a snack. Three hours is a long time. Yeah. Man. All right, well, let's get into some of the news from this week, shall we? Since we've kind of spent a lot more time than I anticipated on that trailer, but I'm glad we did. Hey, man, it was a great discussion. Um, the PlayStation 5 shortage is over, guys. 
You can you can all relax. Although uh, I think two out of four of us have a PS5. I do not because oh, you don't. I haven't found one. Wow. Oh, really? I could man. I was just at GameStop the other day. There's like a few of them in the, each one that I Yo, went to. Yo, next time I'll give you money right now. You pick me one or up, or you can just go yourself. With what? I'm here on Tuesday. A car. So yeah, yeah, a car. Hey, do you do you want the sucker Walk. version where you get the, the bus? Uh, no, I don't want the disc version. I want the download. No, no, I'm talking about the game that you get. A cab. You get paying the actual price of the game in the bundle which kind of defeats the whole purpose of being a bundle fuck you for that sony let's hear it i'd rather do the god of war bundle if i'm gonna pay for a game I, I, yeah. listen if i'm if i've got a ps5 forever for any reason it's because of those single player games like god of war god of war ragnarok i want uh spider-man horizon zero spider-man. dawn i want the spider-man games it's the only reason why i bought mine only reason otherwise i have no need for it I heard the uh, second Spider-Man is really short. Well, it's not really short, but it's shorter than the original. Yes. I'm looking forward that to that Wolverine game. game. Agreed. It's pretty far down the line, I think. But uh, but that should be interesting. But is there anything else in gaming that's really coming out for either Xbox and or PlayStation right not now? It's t- not until June. Stagnant. Not until June. Right? It's been pretty stagnant. If you tune into episode 127 of the Alter Ego podcast, you'll hear all of the previews for games coming out. Oh, yeah. We did the Game Awards. And they talked about all the games that were coming. Uh, there's a bunch. There's a bunch. But um, yeah, so uh, get yourself a PS5 while you can if you're looking for one, or uh, be an adult and get an Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> yep. uh, Why would I want to be on to movies and TV? It's you have a faster one system. Yeah. yeah, PS4, of course. Yeah, it's inferior. So is the PS5. Um, movies and TV. Out Let's get mind. into it. Uh, everybody's favorite uh, mutant, Quicksilver, from uh, Age of Ultron is being targeted as the new james bond that's great yeah i love aaron taylor johnson i think is he is he a british guy or is he american he's british okay okay he seems british um (laughs) i think he's a great fit for that man like he's he's a young dude he's got style he's a good looking cat why wouldn't you do it do you think the role was amazing the way I, yeah, he, he was amazing. Like, he acted that whole British with the suit. He, I, when I saw that movie, I thought, "Oh man, James Bond's right there." I haven't seen it. Yeah, it's sure. it's a bullet train is exactly what you would expect it to be based off of the trailer. Nice, but it's entertaining. It's it's a good watch. I watched it on. I think it was Amazon. Well, I look but at the cast. Was, and I know it's good. It's he a little was awesome. drawn out, but it's good. Very drawn out. <laughs> He's just. <laughs> you guys ever see? Uh... Oh, uh, what is it? Clerks 2? Yes. Three movies of guys walking a ring to a fucking volcano. I'm ready for walking, the new one, too, by the way. Walking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go see. Isn't Clerks that when they work, they work at the fast food place and he goes on Movie. that tangent? Yeah. yeah. He created that fast food place, actually. Yeah, he did. Yeah, Kevin Smith. Yeah. And he doesn't eat it, though. Yeah. He's now. Well, he had a heart attack. He probably doesn't eat any fast food. Little maker heart attack that he had. Speaking of. Uh, uh, workplaces. Vince McMahon is back at his old stomping grounds, the WWE. Bro, he basically just walked in there with that swagger and said, "You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. I'm taking over." No, that's sure that's, that's not, not at all. That's he not exactly exactly off that board. That board. Yeah, he booted three people off the board. Yes, he did. He, he probably has the majority ability to do well, that because he owns it. Still. But the interesting part is he's going in to sell it. Does okay. that improve or decline the value of WWE? I think with how successful AEW has been, I think this is a death note for WWE. I really mm. do. That's why I think he's trying to sell it. How much is it worth? A few I, billion dollars. A few billion Billions. easily. Just be especially yeah. with the markets overseas and the the Saudi Arabian market, it's worth so much money. But they're not going to sell. I, I, first of all, your comment that AEW is making WWE a death note. WWE still does hand over fist more money than AEW. AEW is a better product, but WWE is in no way in danger. I think Vince was sick of hearing the nonsense anymore and said, you know what? I think I'm done. I'm going to make a couple billion off of this sale and I'm going to hit the bricks. Didn't you say his own daughter stepped down? Well, before uh, we got uh, Stephanie this, McMahon, she, she tendered her official resignation with her husband, Paul Triple H Levesque still being head of talent, which is interesting. Very. So, but so I don't watch wrestling anymore, right? And I know some of y'all here do. What is the problem with the WWE? Why is AEW 
starting to gain on WWE. I'll ask I don't you. think it's like I don't think it's gotten there yet. I've I've seen a little AEW. I watched little WWE, but could it be that the market's just too saturated? It's too much WWE. No, I don't the think Smackdown that's it. and uh, this and the that and the da. No, it's not that. It's the nature of the program because WWE went from attitude era yes. to something that was more palatable for all audiences, whether it be your kids, your husband, your whatever, softer. your wife, it got softer. And a lot of these people that were going for that stuff were like, I don't, I don't care. I don't want to see this. They want to see that dude out there crashing beers together and getting crazy. And AEW has leaned more into that. There's a lot more. So first of all, WWE doesn't like to show blood anymore. They don't like to show anything that the kids can't watch. So they've eliminated the whole hardcore aspect. of. There's no hardcore championship. There's no hardcore matches. Bro, there's can, nothing. Can I'm I tell out. you how I'm sad out. I was when I found out there were no more bra and panty matches? <laughs> well, Done. W Done. AEW doesn't do that either. They do actually do a great job of highlighting their female talent as well, just like WWE. But... You know, it, to me, it's like when commercials got a little woke with stuff and you started seeing everything starting to change. WWE did their version of that with their product and people are like, I'm, I'm sick of this, dude. So would you think when he signed his major deal with Fox, he had to clean it up a little bit? to be on that mainstream well that's TV. a fact because that's that's well documented that they sent wwe letters on the daily saying if you don't stop this we are terminating your your okay. contract so he had so to, yeah. so that I happened could. but aew is a whole new thing and the aew came in and said we're going to do wrestling the way we want to do it and the way that it got popular way back when which is why it's doing gangbusters now so, I mean, I think Vinny Mac sees the writing on the wall. He's not going to be able to come back in a good light after this whole scandal. And it's not in a good light from the people. I think the people could care less about Vince McMahon's personal life. It's the board and the companies they like to be associated with and the advertisers, which I could give a crap about. But Hold clearly on, what, happened, what happened to Vince McMahon? Uh, he got in a scandal. of No, no, not sexual assault. Or, uh, harassment. It was, a, harassment it was a, yeah. No, it was an affair with talent and paying them on the side to hush be money. a part of the roster. Yeah, essentially it was hush money. He wasn't sexually harassing. He was married. Yeah, so he was to basically Linda. buying prostitutes and gave. There them, were yeah. other. There were other people part of the boards and the writers who were using their positions to like get with these attractive women, and then in in return were like giving them more roles and championship fights and stuff like that. I mean, that's a very broad stroke. So was mine. I, I don't know all the details of yeah. it, but I know that it was involved him paying talent and having sex with them. Oh, so like so oh, there, a lot of other corporate places. That's cool. Yeah. There it's are there like, are sexual assault pressure. allegations against him, though, that came out. That story came out in the middle of December. Mm. Okay. From from where? I, that's interesting. It's new to me. But either um, way, it doesn't matter when you're in that position yeah. in business. Oh, yeah, not yeah. that not that we're condoning any of it. It's just when when that kind of stuff happens and you're that high on corporate level, bye. Advertisers don't want to deal with you. Then the money goes. So, um. Anyway, uh. Moving on. Wednesday from Netflix, the show Wednesday renewed for season two. Shocking no one. Um. Great show, by the way. Yeah, Is season two going to be called Thursday. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> really? And then the last really? one, be, it's Friday, Friday. Oh Got to get down on Friday. Yeah, on that note, <laughs> see ya. Yes, sir. Yes, I know that song. Um, I'll turn up to that show right now. Let's, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go watch Friday. And you just what hear it in are the background. we talking about? Um, we're You've talking about. Seen that? Oh, I've seen that okay. video. We're talking about Avatar three, apparently. So, uh, <laughs> poor uh, what's what's the writer's name? Michael or, or oh my god, James Cameron. James Cameron. He's coming out and said, "Well, I know what I'm doing for the next six or seven years." <laughs> this movie is the seventh highest grossing movie of all time already. How many weeks has it been out before we get? Not any, that many. It's right? been out what? Maybe less than a month. Jesus Christ! And it's yeah, already, about a month, month and a half. Yeah. So it came out in December, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that accurate? Sure. It's already the highest grossing movie of 2022. It was out for a month. Wow. And dusted off everyone. That's kind of cool. Um, it, and Avatar 3 is now going to feature the fire blue people, as Ryan calls them. 
Like, I don't even care. They're, they're more blue people. Are they like they Pokemon? Fire. Who cares? I just want to know, is this really leaning into the other avatar? What other avatar? It seems oh, like the airbender? Them off there, but airbender. That's all I'm saying. So clearly the first one was air because they flew around on the mm-hmm. little dragon things. This one's water. Now we got fire. I Hopefully one of the Navi is named Wheeler and they all somehow have a ring that summons Captain Planet. <laughs> oh my gosh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> Captain Planet. Oh my God. Bro, Awa he, is actually Captain Planet. Can you imagine? He is taking 25 Captain years Planet? to set up Captain Planet. Get out of here. If that's true, I'll say James. I'll, watch James. I'll be there at the midnight premiere. I will buy the box set, baby. Let's get it. <laughs> oh, what was your boy's name that got heart? Oh, oh the little I don't Indian remember girl. his name. It was a, it was a guy, Indian yeah, wait, guy. What? who had, uh, had a monkey. Are you sure it was yeah, a guy, not no. a girl? Yeah, I'm willing to bet. I'm willing to bet American dollars. Yeah. Hmm. Come on, man. I know my captain. Can you imagine know. like you got the worst power out of everybody? Heart, man. Walk, heart. Walk, walk, walk. I know the sound it made. It made that really weird. Like, yeah. walk, walk, walk. like what am I supposed to do with this heart? Like, <laughs> come on, man. Bro, without heart, there is no Captain Planet. Hey, first of all, first of all, the Tin Man was able to make it through Oz with heart. So I don't want to hear that kind of bullshit. Wait, the Tin Man was he trying he didn't to have find a heart. He's yeah, he didn't have a heart. He wanted a oh, heart. Oh, wait, was that, was that the Scarecrow? Yeah. Scarecrow didn't have a brain. He needed a brain. A brain. I hate myself. Just, I like how you interjected and were wrong as hell. Listen, man, the Tin Man had a heart and he made it through Oz. No, he didn't. The Grinch, the Grinch needed a heart three times the size. <laughs> I hope him, him, I hope that interjection is for you. Listen, man, John Wick didn't have a heart. What? Yes, he did. John Wick's dog certainly didn't. didn't. Oh wow! To too people. soon. Oh, Way too soon. Man. All right, hey, too let's soon. take a let's take a quick break. And we will be right back on the other side of whatever advertisement pops up in your algorithm. And we're back. Oh, God, what an emotional roller coaster that was. So since I brought everybody up, made everything good, we're going to go to D.C. now and bring everybody down. Oh, that's always great. Hooray. I'm so I, excited. D.C., guys, I'm, I'm wanting the day to be really excited about your news. First start, let's just let's just drop it here. DC willing to move forward with Ezra Miller as the Flash. I'm but not they're dropping know, Gail Gadot. Care. I'm out of here. This is the stupidest so shit. So this ever. is the weird thing that's kind of bad about Twitter is that like they're like, Yeah, they're dropping him, and then James Gunn will tweet out, No, we're not. And so then everybody runs with these stories, and then it comes back and it's like, Yeah, no, that's actually not the truth. We're not dropping her. So we don't know what's going on, but this story has come out that Ezra Miller, like, I'm like, I'm looking at the entire Justice League. And if you're like, Jack, we're recasting the Justice League. Where do we start? I go, Ezra Miller. Number one. You have to. Keep Batfleck. Keep Henry Cavill. Keep Gal Gadot. Keep Jason Momoa. Get rid of Ezra Miller. Don't you have to with all the off, off-screen crap that's happening? I mean, clearly, and it continues to mount. Clearly, they're okay with it. But I, I'm just looking at it from a performance insane, base. Insane. Sorry. And, and that's that's exactly what I was going to say. I don't, I don't get how you have the best possible person to play Superman. You have a phenomenal casting at Wonder Woman, and you go with what is arguably, and I don't think you can really argue it, the worst portrayed character that DC has had so far in The Flash, and you keep that guy. Right. I don't get it. And that's uh, that's off-screen issues or not, he was terrible. By, by the way, if you're hearing the howling in the background, Rhino's new puppy is losing its <laughs> mind. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Uh, my good. wife should be it's home any minute. We're, so we're, we're teasing the uh, the mute button here a little bit, but um, I completely agree. Uh, other than him and Cyborg, I mean, I thought the 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 whole entire Justice League was cast very well, but just I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with it. But uh, a casting that never actually happened on the big screen, but happened on the little screen, Stephen Amell as the Green Arrow. That was a pretty good one yeah. for at least the first two seasons. And then uh, I think since then he has walked away from that role pretty definitely because he's doing heels for Showtime or something like that. Well, I'm pretty sure they ended that series. The Green Arrow series ended. Which it had to. I thought it was his final season is like coming up. No, no, no that's the flash in which gets to the point full circle oh. Stephen amell will be rejoining uh green arrow and flash final their final season probably just a cameo is there any way we see any of these like super girls and like green arrows show up in these new dc movies with james Gunn i don't or know anything of that i don't know it's james I, Gunn. yes 
<laughs> yes, I, I, I think with all of the cameos and all the appearances we're starting to get in Marvel now with She-Hulk and all of these lesser known characters, I think you're 100% going to start to see a lot of DC people. And not to mention, it, it seems like now the, the, the thing is that lesser characters are doing well. They're doing better than the big name characters because people know the big name characters and they don't want to see that anymore. That's like with us with Peacemaker. Peacemaker was the big one because of the movie. But then they go and they show Vigilante and everybody's like, I love this dude. Give me more Vigilante. Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't really care for Peacemaker in the movie. It was uh, it was a show that made him for me. Yeah. And I would have never watched it if it wasn't for this. I'm podcast, just saying so. he's the big name, right? Yeah. John Cena was the big name there. Case in point, too, for Marvel is Star-Lord. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, yeah. Nobody knew who Star-Lord was before he came out in Guardians. And he's right. a, a top tier, top tier character now. Right now, for sure. Everybody knows him especially because of his whole moment in Endgame, uh, if you didn't watch the other ones. Uh, more wonderful news. Actually, this is not bad news. The Penguin spinoff starring Colin Farrell is set to pre- begin production in February. Yeah? I guess. I liked him. Does he I, need I'm, his own show, I, though? I'm ready for that universe to take off, man. I'm excited to see it. I still think that was uh, one of the best Batmans we've ever gotten. Not better than Dark Knight. But, you know, we'll see. But does he need, does the villain really need his own show if you're not going to keep, if you're building if you're Gotham gonna, City, if you're building Gotham City for the next time Batman shows up, then yeah. But I, what if Pattinson isn't the Batman? He what is. That's already, that's already been confirmed. Is it, right? that been confirmed that he's Batman, coming back yeah. or he's James coming Gunn's back. Uh, stuff? No. He's Batman, not 2 is, Batman 2 is already in production. Right. Oh, hold on. Let, let me get this straight. So I want to, so, so they're going to do like a Gotham City Batman with Reeves. And then they're going to do Justice League and Batman with James Gunn. It'll be two Correct. different Batmans, Correct. different all timelines and universes. Yep, that's DC for you. Well, okay. Doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Um, I think that's stupid, but hey, who, who am I to judge? So they go to the Penguin and not like the Joker or something. like. <laughs> or the even, Joker's getting I'd, his own movie. And honestly, to be quite honest right now, I would rather see uh, who's your boy. The guy who blew everything up, uh, the Riddler. I'd rather see something else. Oh, Paul first. Dano. Paul Dano. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather see a, a, a series about that versus Colin Farrell. I, I, I don't disagree. I think the Penguin is meant to be a centerpiece because Pat Oswalt does deals with everybody. So I think it's going to highlight more than just him. Uh, I also think that Joker that they showed at the end of the Batman did not get the greatest warm and fuzzies from the audience. They were kind of like, what is this? We don't like this. So we might see some changes there. Um, but yes, I, this is DC, man. I mean, that thing worked, made a lot of money, looked fantastic. And all of a sudden, here we go. We're like, well, this works. We're going to keep making money, though. What's the worst Joker you've seen? The worst Joker I've ever Jared seen? Like, out of all of Jared them? Though. Just Jared Leto. Jared yeah. Leto. Okay. I, I'm glad we were all in agreement. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. He's he's. That wasn't even a Joker. That was just a clown. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that was. That was just was. a clown. That's funny. Um, but yeah. So uh, here's news that you already probably are aware of if you follow the show at all. D- uh, Dwayne Johnson apparently ruffled a lot of feathers at WB. Went around a lot of top executives to pitch his movie ideas and stuff like that, and made people angry. That movie was terrible. I actually just watched it a couple, oh, like a week ago, and it's just unwatchable. What movie? Did that? Did that? Uh, hot, did that headline up. really shock anybody though? When you read that, it's like, yeah, that sounds like something The Rock would do. Try it hard. Does. I don't. I, I want to know what the original story was. I want to know where they saw in the original script and said, "This is gonna work." Other than somebody going, "It's The Rock." We're gonna put him in a superhero suit and throw some CGI on him. No, it's that's the rock. it. That's it. It was. I mean, this that's is the that's rock. what DC was thinking. I mean, like, hey, can we can we stop and look and think to ourselves what movie has The Rock starred in, like front and center, oh, okay, main character that has really been good that we've really enjoyed. <clears throat> I can only think of one, and that's the Rundown with Sean William Scott. That one was pretty that good. Was, that, that, one, one, that was not. Yeah, that was good. It wasn't that I did great. Like that one. It wasn't that great. And Sean William Scott did a lot for me in that one because I love Sean William Scott. You got thunder. No <laughs> thunder. <laughs> lightning? Little lightning. <laughs> oh, that had uh uh what's his name? Oh God, uh, Mark Christopher Wal- Walken. What? Yeah, Christopher what Walken. Movie? Yes, Christopher Walken. What's yeah. that movie with him and Wahlberg? Him and oh, uh, where they were bodybuilders. They were bodybuilders. Yeah, that yeah, was pain and gain. Pain and gain. Pain and gain. That was so dumb. That was such an awful movie. It wasn't yeah. bad. 
I can't Although, think no, of I'm anything. still thinking of a good rock movie. You want to go? With, you want to go with Tooth Fairy? Nah, Ooh, <laughs> great movie. You want to go with uh, GI Joe? What was that movie where no, he was actually, like? That might have been one of my favorites. That he like was the football in. coach and he Gridiron, 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 Gridiron. Yeah. I'll give you that one. That, that one was good. That's not bad. That was pretty good. Okay, we've got two. Fast and Furious. He's not the star of that one. Yeah, okay. fair. Um, what about Doom? Just, I was gonna say. Doom, All right, how do I remove Rhino just, from? The <laughs> oh, I, but for me, I was gonna say that because I just like the the Doom aspect, though. You know and that you was know? Carl Urban as the main. Yeah. No, Carl Urban's amazing. Carl does. Urban is uh, the man. He and Henry Cavill rule the nerd universe he with Iron Fist. The Wolverine. I now love- I know I know he wasn't a main character in this movie, but I actually really did enjoy his performance in Other Guys. Oh yeah, the yeah. He played, he played a he played a douchebag, which is fitting for him. So I mean, he did a pretty good job in that one. My favorite movie so far is probably Central Intelligence. Honestly, that Steve- one wasn't bad. Okay. Oh yes, with him and, that's uh, good. Him and that's Kevin good. Hart. Pound right Kevin here. Hart. Yep, that one wasn't Kevin was Hart. Man, and it was Kevin only- Hart. No, but he was a main but character. He was a main character that. though. He was a funny man. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He was. He was in the movie, the bar scene where he's like, "This is what's going to happen." It's, he's got a good one. Okay. Yeah. So we're sure, now five go. minutes into talking about rock movies. All right, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's move on quickly from that. Uh, for everybody uh, watching their calendars, circle February first. Wakanda Forever will be coming to Disney Plus. Hooray! Congratulations. Won't watch it again. Uh, I'll watch it again. No, I'll watch Once it enough. again. It'll I'll definitely run. watch it again. I love Lupita Nyong'o. I think she's great. Mm-hmm. I think I. Uh, I actually really enjoyed the. <laughs> I really enjoyed the woman that played Riri Williams. I thought she was. Is that awesome Ironheart? Character. Is that Ironheart? Yeah. Oh, dude, Ironheart was probably one of the best things in that movie. I'll agree with that. I don't think she belonged in that movie. I, I think. Uh, she was so do you mean? Do you mean? Not crucial. Do you mean the character Ironheart or the woman? No, just the way they portrayed the they portrayed the character and the little girl, the actress who did it is also really good. The too. character, the character didn't need to be in that movie. They, they could have gotten to the same point without her. I'm nothing against her performance. I mean, sure, I, I'm I'm excited for Ironheart the series. I want to see it, but in terms of that movie, Wakanda Forever, she didn't belong there. But that scene where they're in like that makeshift lab in that warehouse was one of the best like sequences in that whole movie the action sequences riri does not add to that okay yeah she doesn't yeah she really did she really didn't need to be there they could have I, added I any that. other forgettable character and said hey we're gonna kill this person and then shuri still has that moment of you can't do that this is not how you do things and it doesn't matter it didn't have to be riri I, I, i'm ex- like again i'm excited for her. i just don't think she belonged in that movie anyway uh oh this is a juicy oh one. my bad back to rock movies faster that was a good one too what faster is the one where he was in prison and going, going around and, killing everybody yeah him and billy bob thornton it sucked the last five minutes i was don't watch it <laughs> wait you just said it was a good it's uh, good up until that point he should kill them it's so good that no one's heard of it it has a terrible me. ending all right we'll watch it. Again. don't lie <laughs> no I how just... many times did it take you to watch it to watch it all the way through oh just one time oh, okay Oh, so you actually enjoyed this movie? I was just like, man, kill this month. Kill him, kill him. I knew I had a feeling it was gonna happen. I was like, mm-hmm. bitch. I want to watch that Vince Vaughn movie where he's in jail. And where like, Vince Vaughn's in jail? Yeah. And he just he's just like he's like an ex-boxer and he starts murdering people in jail or something like that. I'm not familiar with that I mean, film. I, I've just I've read about it and I'm going to watch it eventually. Interesting. Hugh Jackman says some X-Men legacy was complicated. Says the X-Men legacy is complicated by Brian Singer. I've heard some iffy things about Brian Singer. I don't know much about him. Uh, I've heard allegations of all kinds of wild stuff that I'm not going to say over here on YouTube because that could be, you know, transcribed and used against us. But I've heard Brian was not the easiest to deal with on set. He's also not the greatest people on a personal level, apparently, either. Yeah, and I don't know. The quote that was used was he did some things on set that would not happen today is exactly what Hugh Jackman said, which is, I think, a a pretty big thing to to have said, especially from somebody like Hugh Jackman. When you say that, like like that, that was the point I was going to make. Like Hugh Jackman seems for anybody who talks about him to be widely renowned as like the nicest dude you've ever met. So for Hugh Jackman to say that about you, it's kind of like, damn, (laughs) I wonder what you really did. 
<laughs> yeah, no kidding. I would love to know um, the details. I'm sure somebody like Hugh Jackman's never going to go into the details, but I would love to know what happened on set for him to have said that. Obviously, years later, too, it's something that stuck with Hugh Jackman. I mean, this is how long has it been since that he worked with him? Probably eight years, seven years? Longer, I, I would think, yeah. I mean, that's just that's just insane to me. Um, oh, here's an interesting one, too. Apparently, oh, I'd love to see this guy come over from D.C., but Ben Affleck has been approached to play a character named Dario Agger, Agger, A-G-G-E-R. And the moment I saw this, I was like, I need to look up who this is. I need to look look him up right now. Long story short, he is a villain, and his character can turn into a giant minotaur and uh, basically does kind of deals with the devil kind of thing. He's done a lot of deals against Red Hulk. He's done deals against people like Moon Knight. He's definitely darker side of the MCU. And I would love to see. So you, the, the one I'm going to make the comparison to was in Constantine, the guy who was the demon in Constantine. I can't remember his name. Great performance. Wonderful movie. Not the guy who played uh, Satan. The one who said, uh, you know, fresh meat, finger licking good. That guy. That, that wasn't supposed to be Michael Morningstar, was it? In Constantine, or is it is it Michael Morningstar? I thought that's who that was. In uh, well, I, I don't know. I don't I can't know. Remember. I, I can't remember. All I remember is the performance, which was great. I knew that he was a demon, and you know, John Constantine represented the balance and Papa Midnight and all that other stuff. I don't know. I'm gonna look it up right now. Constantine, 2005. Let's take a looky loo here. Damn, who that's a lot was... of stars on this movie, by the way. That's another one I hope they don't cancel. I really want a Constantine 2. I don't think you're going to get that. No. I don't think you're going to get a Constantine 2. You'll get a... There we Alphazar. go. There we go. I think you'll get uh I, I think you'll get a, a Constantine. Robin Rossdale from uh Nobody's talking from Bush. Okay. That uh, was who played Gath- Balthazar. I'm, I'm, I'm so blown away by that, guys. I love Bush. I love Balthazar, but I love Bush even more. He's so good. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever come down from this cloud. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> wow. But I think Ben wow. Affleck would be a fantastic <laughs> villain. Don't you? Yeah. I, I think know. I think, I think one of the bigger plastic? reasons. Has he ever played a the, villain? Oh, of course he has. Yeah. Ben Affleck has? Name it. Yeah, and he what? wasn't kind of technically in the town. He wasn't a good guy. He's That's true. Red That's red true. He was, but he wasn't guys, guy he was the tin man. Who was looking for a heart? <laughs> but was he healthy? He stole. He stole that person's oh, heart, and so he was the bad guy. Wow. Huh. Okay. So no, I don't think Ben Affleck has ever been the villain in a movie. Not prominently, at least. Hmm. Anybody? Um, DJ, hit me with the Google Music, please. Oh boy. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, geez, Louise. So technically, this list that I just looked up. On Collider has him as the villain in Batman versus Superman. Come on, that doesn't count. He has the, he was he was the villain in Dazed and Confused, the guy with the paddle. Fredo, Fredo uh, he was the bad guy in Mallrats. I'll say that he was the bad guy in Dogma. I was gonna say Dogma was the only one I could think uh, of technically. In a sure, way. he was the bad guy in the Last Duel. Oh so uh, Dogma is the one that I just got to was was Dogma. So yeah, yeah. okay. That was when uh, Alanis Morissette played God. That's correct. He was yeah. technically the bad guy in the account. She had one hand in her pocket. He was not the the bad guy in the account, though. He was he was the the protagonist in the account. I mean, he was an assassin killing people. And you're right. He was the bad guy in in uh, the town. Apparently, to this list, according to this list. I mean, you can't what rob deep, trucks what deep, and then not be a bad guy. What what deep corner of the internet did you go to to find a list compiled of of villain roles for Ben Affleck? Collider dot com and the number one is uh this movie that is coming out in 20 or came out in 2022 called deep water oh well vic van allen no idea what the fuck that is okay yeah great i love that for all of us um moving on from ben affleck let's talk about nicholas cage speaking of people showing up people who are not returning he will not be there as spider-man noir and uh mr dave batista has pretty publicly come out and said he will no longer be returning as Drax saying that he uh, wants to do more serious roles. Fuck that Dave. Keep playing freaking Drax. 
throwing down the gauntlet. Me and you, one on one, and the table, ladders, and chairs match, bro. Oh, I'm taking Drax. Shut up. It's written out. <laughs> I'm going to win. I'm taking, I'm taking Ryan on that one. If it's WWE, I'm taking Ryan. If it's yeah. AEW, Batista's got you. <laughs> I, so I, I, can't, I can't knock Dave Batista for this because he, he wants to expand his acting palette, and that's that's respectable. But is he capable of doing this is is my biggest question amen like what acting t- like i get he's good at like these big guys what, the last kind of like major role i saw him in was that one movie where he was trying to protect the little girl and he was like the spy I don't yeah know it's a tooth it's about. a tooth fairy remake pretty much yeah and it, that was pretty not great and he was the same role he always plays in army of the dead too well, this oh. and that brings me to the point that I was going to make is, you know, we talked about this last week. He is a better wrestler turned actor than The Rock, and but at the same him. time, he's a role actor. He's only ever going to be the beefed up, big superhero kind of guy. What, well, else, what so are the roles he's going to play? The reason this guy brought up was the whole knock at the cabin, the M Night Shyamalan movie that just came out. He's apparently uh, got a very serious role in that. Now, I agree. It's hard to look at Batista and have him be vulnerable just because of the way that he looks. Not that it can't be done, but I don't know. You know, to me, it's if I'm looking at an actor and how they portray emotion, it's in their facial features. And I don't see that much from Batista in any role that he's ever done. His facial features remain the same, Same. even in in Army of the Dead, Mm -hmm. when he's having tough moments and he's crying and he's he still looks the same to me. You know what I mean? I mean I that's just what made him such a good Drax, too, is because he had the same yeah, face he, every time he talked. Damn, that's actually a really good thing what you just said. I agree. Because he was because Drax is supposed to be basically always stone cold. Yeah, but Drax is never, in my my experience in the comics, he was never that stupid or that literal. I was that was something made up for James Gunn and it has forever changed the character, like we've talked about several times. But I just don't see him being that stupid. I've he was that stupid. Hour. He was that stupid. It wasn't until the, uh, I think it was the infinite storyline that he became smarter. He died and was resurrected and then became a more conscious person. So but what was, happened he, with him was he, he so what, this is why I thought we could lose Drax and not lose Drax. Because Drax literally sheds an outer layer of himself and something else comes out from inside of him. Yeah. So he could he could die and then split down the middle and a different thing come out. So like a cocoon kind of like yeah. a butterfly comes out type shit. Yeah. I, I just know. never understand. And the one that came out was smarter, was meaner, was yeah. oh, meaner a too. More violent. That's, yeah. that's the one that killed really? Thanos. That's yeah, the one that, that ripped out yeah. Thanos's heart. Correct. Oh, that's that's dope. I'd like to see that. Exactly. I'd like to see that. That's why when he came in, he's like, nothing goes over my head. Oh, uh, my reflexes are too. I was like, what is this? Can I just bring up an off topic? That would we like to see some more rated R movies on a superhero level? Hundred percent, hundred percent, one thousand like, percent. To like yeah. bring up these, like, because you guys talk to me about all these things in these comics that you guys read, and I don't have time nor the patience to read. But like, I listen, I listen, <laughs> and I watch these storylines, and I'm like, damn, that fucking sounds awesome. Yeah. Will we ever see something along those the lines? Guy, the guy who is got Deadpool. I mean, well, Deadpool, yeah. <laughs> The guy who's been the most drastically underused in terms of graphic violence and crazy stories that they're capable of is clearly Wolverine. Like Wolverine has not gotten his day in court, if you ask me. Will we ever get a Wolverine? Not even, not even in Logan have they done what they could do. Sure. You see him throw the claws into a lot of people and slice, and maybe an arm comes off with no blood. But Wolverine's a dude who will rip the guts out of your body. I mean, he's nasty. He's the best he is at what he does, and what he does isn't very nice, but they've never shown him at an R-rated level, and they need to... Well, they don't need to do anything, but... I thought Logan was rated R. It is. It is. Okay. It is. But it's still... But it's still... I, it's still I, it pales in comparison to what Wolverine is capable of. Do you think in Deadpool 3, which it has been confirmed that there will be some sort of Wolverine in it, do we see like even just a little drop in the bucket of what you're talking about? No. No? No. No, that sucks. Look, no. No. when it comes to making movies, one of your biggest things is to make money. Yeah, and having rated R movies limits the amount of people that can go see them in theaters. And it's you a, showing want to do that. You showing Wolverine's true potential, like him. And first of all, the claws that they show on the on the movies and the TV shows are not what the claws are in the comics. The claws are the length of his goddamn forearm, and they come way out there. 
and he really does use them for maximum potential. I'm talking cutting people in half. And, and like, that's the kind of stuff that I personally would like. Yeah, I want to see that. I'd like to see Omega Red versus Wolverine in a rated R movie. It could happen. But I think the I only way we're ever going to see rated R superhero movies is like that one we got a couple years ago with the boy that had the powers of Superman. What was what was that called? Bright, Bright Light or Br Bright Burn? Bright Burn. Bright Burn. That's the only way we're ever going to see the true potential of superheroes in a rated R nature is, is a movie like that where it's a horror movie and it's it's advertised to that specific audience but you're never going to see an mcu or a dcu do that because you eliminate a large portion of your audience yeah and the closest thing you're going to see to what a character should look like in terms of graphic violence and uh and, and true to their comic book counterpart is in punisher season one that's the closest you'll ever get if you watch that scene of him in prison yeah. and that little fight he has in the hallway you will not as of what's been published now now who's graphically violent and a badass my man right down here in the corner blade um he but he kills vampires and they ash and they, there's nothing graphically violent about that, that they was just still disappear pretty gory though it for, was for its time i don't say gory is the thing because when he stabs them there's no blood they just pfft, that's true. The only blood gone. that you really got was when, like, they were at the vampire rave and, like, the blood right. was draining from the ceiling. That's, oh, that's, it. Right that's the, the bloodiest scene. that movie got. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember so, when ahead. you sent me that Burnthal clip, and that actually made me actually want to watch The Punisher. I'm like, holy shit. Like, this is rough. I mean, he's Damn, not really realistic. Good. I mean, and not, not just that, but I mean, it really is true to the character because that the Punisher gets hurt and just keeps on going. And it's not because of powers or anything like that. And Burnthal captured that majestically oh, of being injured him. and moving forward and continuing to be what he was. I mean, it was just, it was great. But do I think we're going to see something of that nature? I don't see why not. I don't know if you'll see it from your favorites though, because just if like I can't said, I apologize about interrupting. If I can, real quick, when it comes to Burnthal, outside of the MCU, he is a top three cast at his character. Yeah, along with yeah. along with Wolverine, he mm. is top three for sure. But I, is he also typecast and character cast in all his roles? I mean, even in The Walking Dead, he does play a Punisher type guy. Um, well, insane. did you see him in uh, Wolf of Wall Street? Uh, I don't remember much of it. I yeah, was a little I bit Burnthal. When I yeah. That movie. Yeah, he was he was great in Wolf of Wall Street, and he didn't play that. I mean, he was a, a roughneck kind of guy, but he wasn't fighting people. He wasn't beating people up. I mean, he was he was a, a good character in that movie. I just, I, well, in terms of top, in terms of casting, I think Cap and Iron Man are right at the top. Oh, God. Uh, Cap and Iron Man. But in terms of true to their character, yeah, Burnthal, uh, I think in, in when the MCU gets a hold of him and you see the skull coming into the mcu don't expect him to team up with a lot of people because uh he ain't about that life but a but cameo here and there would be perfect a cameo here and there showing up and helping somebody or something like that that would be wild oh i'm all about a, a, a punisher standalone series on disney it's plus i'm all about that do you think they did a type a good casting with deadpool i mean ryan reynolds does portray deadpool yeah, in the uh, there's a lot of people who they? think that Ryan Reynolds is the titular, the best thing that could have possibly been done for Deadpool. I think there are a couple guys that could have done what Ryan Reynolds does. Um, Drop me he one. Kind of Sean William Scott. He just kind of Ryan Reynolds. Okay. Ryan Reynolds the character a little bit. It's it's the way Ryan Reynolds comedic timing, and there's nothing wrong with that because Deadpool was nothing but a little blob over his head beforehand. So who's to say he's not like that? But I think there were other people out there that could have recreated the wheel on that one yeah um hugh jackman is uh, maybe it's an, uh, an an unpopular opinion i don't think he's the best wolverine casting i love him i think he's great i think what he's done with the character is fantastic i don't think wolverine is mean enough i don't think the way we see hugh jackman portray him is very wolverine-esque you think he's too clean i think he's to... too clean yeah. i think he is and then we see that stuff with uh butcher in the boys god damn and you see uh my boy and now that i mentioned him i can't think of his name carl urban and i think if you took the butcher and put him in the wolverine costume 
and the way that he talks to people, the way he interacts with them and put a couple claws on him and let him kill people with some gr- brutality that they have in the boys. You got yourself a Wolverine there, man. Like yeah. if, if Marvel, Disney, Iger, you, I know you guys are big fans of the show. Listen <laughs> to my man. He needs to become like Wolverine. He looks the part even in the boys put claws on him. Like you said, he looks like Wolverine. Yeah. He's he's dirty enough to do it. Uh, I too. think I think Wolverine. He's too tall. He but so is Hugh Jackman. <laughs> so Jackman, bigger, isn't he? I think I think Jackman is an OG. I think he's earned it. I think he absolutely deserves to play Wolverine as long as he humanly can. If that's what he wants, I'm down with it. Do I think other people can do it better? Absolutely. Do you think that the the recasting of Jean Grey for some of these other spinoffs and uh, what's her Sophie Turner coming back as Jean Grey? Do you think that's a good move? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good move because she's a bigger named actress and they're going to be recasting Wolverine and they're going to be recasting Scott Summers to be have people that'll be age appropriate to for for that whole love triangle that happens. But they kind of made Gene everything to to Wolverine. And yeah, she's a big part of his story, but she's not like everything to him. And that's kind of what they made the character about. I mean, she kind of is, though. No, she's kind of not. In like they base whole- they base that concept off the mm. co- off the uh, cartoon though. Yeah. In the right. comic books, he's not he's not desperately head over heels in love with her in every storyline you read. And he ain't sensitive. That's, that's based off of the the X Men cartoons that came out in the nineties. And they went with that in the X Men series. Of him right now, I'm just sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever think X Men will live up to the expectations that we hold up and we want? Yeah, hundred percent. When? Because I'm still waiting. Well. That's what we're getting into when we're talking about multiple timelines, multiple branches of reality, 616 Earth, all that stuff. Well, that's what you're getting set up for. I don't give a damn what X-Men they make. If it ain't got Morph in it, I'm done. I ain't watching <laughs> shit. <laughs> give a a lot I want to see, I wanna see Morph. I want to see uh, Multiple Man. I mean, I know we've seen Multiple Man, but not in any sort of meaningful way i want to see a good gambit because we have not gotten a good gambit. no we yet. have not channing tatum would have been a great game i don't, i disagree with that but yeah he's a name. Name. just keep fastbender and the other guys professor x and magneto Fast, we're done fastbender to me uh, he was a way better portrayal of magneto than different than ian mckellen i'm not going to say better because i know a lot of people love ian mckellen but when i looked at what magneto who's my favorite x-man he's my favorite mutant Pound. When you're looking at stuff like not in front of Brian, um, sorry, oh, when stuff like that. that is going down. <laughs> fuck, I'm sorry. Then uh, you know, I just love me some Magneto. Anyway, guys, that's gonna do it for us here at the Alter Ego Podcast, episode 131. Uh, very soon, we'll be doing some more of the Versus series that you have seen on YouTube, and we will also be having a standalone episode that is breaking down this next phase in a big deep dive into our man King the Conqueror. So. Thank you so much for watching or listening, whatever it is you're doing. We'll see you on the other side. Ciao. God, I love it when I time it like that.